Welcome to this episode in which I'm going to talk about vector subtraction. I'm going to compare that to vector addition. So this is vector subtraction. How do you subtract two vectors? Again, let's start with examples. Suppose I tell you you have one vector which has magnitude 3 and another vector which has magnitude 4 and I want to sub I want you to subtract this. Well, I would write this as vector 3 plus negative of vector 4. What's the meaning of negative of a vector? Well, that is actually very easy. You just flip the direction by 180 degrees, which means if this is vector A, negative of vector A is this. This is minus A. If this is vector P, this is minus P. I hope you get the point. All right. So we can write this now as vector 3 plus vector 4. You see, I have flipped the direction. And so subtraction can be converted to addition and we know how to add. That's easy. So they're trying to cancel each other out and you get 1. Notice that when the two vectors are having an angle of 0, you get the minimum value. That means this is exactly opposite of addition. <laughs> Obviously, this is subtraction. What would happen if I had vector 3 and I asked you to from this subtract vector 4? Well, again, we'll write this as vector 3 and I'm going to flip that vector. Oh, so that's going to be 4. Don't, it's, it's not to scale. I've not drawn the arrow marks properly. But anyways, 3 plus 4 and that gives me 7. Ooh, maximum value. That's the maximum value. And that's what you get when theta is 180 degrees. So you see, <clears throat> something similar is happening over here. <clears throat> here, what we can say is, the magnitude of vector A minus B in general will also, just like the summation, lie between two numbers. And that is the difference between the two vectors, uh, the difference of the magnitude, and the sum of the magnitudes. But remember, you get the maximum value when theta is 180 degrees. And you get the minimum value when theta is 0 degrees. That's the whole idea behind it. Now what I want to do, over here, I don't want to stop over here. What I want to do is, I want to compare uh, the summation of two vectors and the addition of two vectors. Let's quickly do that. Let's come over here and let's compare. Okay. If I tell you what vector A magnitude is, what vector B magnitude is, what vector A plus B magnitude is, and what vector A minus B magnitude is, can we build a relationship between them? The answer is yes. And that answer is very simple. You may have learned this now simple formula in high school. A plus B, uh, the whole square, plus A minus B, the whole square, equals a square plus oh, sorry equals what 2a square plus b square yeah well we can use the same formula here two times a square plus b square can be written as a plus b the whole square plus a minus b magnitude the whole square and so you see when you are given problems where you know three of those guys, you know vector A, you know B, and you know either the summation or you know the difference. Without having to calculate the angle, you can calculate the other quantity. Let's take an example. Let's take an example. You have vector A, let's say the magnitude is 10. Vector B has a magnitude, say, 5. And vector A plus B has a magnitude, say, 5. Okay, I want to calculate what vector A minus B is going to be. Alright, so let's use this formula and quickly do this. So 2 times magnitude of A square, that is 100, plus magnitude of B square, which is 25, equal to A plus B whole square, 5 square, plus unknown. So I get 2 times 125 equal to 25 plus x squared so x squared is 250 minus 25 so x becomes uh, the square root of 225 therefore x is 15 
Ooh, obviously that makes sense. Look, magnitude of A plus B is 5 units and that's only possible when they are opposite to each other. Ah, the two vectors must have been aligned this way. And that's why when you sum them, you get 5. When you subtract, you flip one and you get 15. That makes sense. Okay, so that's how you can connect the four quantities. See you next time. Do some practice problems.